Hey team. I was asked on Twitter recently, uh, how am I using repo prompt? And I thought this would be a good time. It's a new year. I've been using repo prompt for about a year. So I thought it'd be a good time to look and review how am I using it differently now in January, 2026 versus how I've been using it over the past 12 months. Um, so right away here, I have repo prompt open. Uh, this is the app. It has a workspace here on the left. I'm going to dive into how all of this works, but first I want to show you one of the amazing things that repo prompt has added, uh, here in the past few months. I have got Claude code open here. I'm actually going to, let's clear this window a bit. Um, I'm in a platform infra repository. This is one that I'm using to keep track of all of the rules, all the procedures, everything that I need to manage my VPS with about a dozen different web apps on it right now, and then several client apps that I'm looking to pull onto it. And what I'd like to do is have Claude be able to just run that for me. Uh, so I've been working on this documentation repo and I'm turning it into a Claude code plugin uh, that I'll be able to run on the server itself and have Claude take care of a lot of the routine maintenance updates, uh, security vulnerabilities, those types of tasks. With repo prompt, uh, it integrates with all of the IDEs like Cursor, Windsurf. It also integrates with Claude Code, Codex, Gemini CLI. And within this, it provides these really great commands that we can use to get started. Uh, I'm not going to go through each of these here, but we will start with my favorite one, which is RP build. I use this all of the time when I'm starting, uh, a new like feature, a new, um, portion of the code. <clears throat> RP build is a great one for just getting started. And I'm going to show you that here. Um, let's add a tracker for all updates to our apps and tendencies. We want to track any updates in a specific database and make that available for review as well as a weekly report of all software updates. Ensure we follow practices from the repository and this is also available in the Look. All right. So that's not a great prompt, uh, to be honest. I just did that off the top of my head, uh, but I'm not worried about it because Claude's really smart and repo prompt is going to provide it everything you need. You can see here, it gets started right away. It's doing uh, a bunch of stuff, file tree, um, pulling in the search, looking at the code structure. It's found some things. It's getting an idea. Excellent. I now have a good understanding. Platform's ready. You look at the plugin structure. Now building uh, the context for this task using the context builder tool. So it's doing a whole bunch of stuff right now. And there it's sending off a prompt to repo prompt. So let's head back over to the app. Uh, first thing you can see is the little spinning here. We have a few different chats. Uh, and right now what's happening, if I come down here, you can see a repo prompt is now working with Claude code to pull all of the information that it needs in order to develop a plan and execute on the task that I gave it. Already, you can see here, compared to what I gave it, we've got a more comprehensive set of instructions, right? We're looking at an update tracker. It's already thinking about how it's going to store that, the weekly report, the interface, everything, right? So we've already got a better prompt than what I started with. Now we're gonna let this run for a little bit, and while it's running, I'm gonna show you just a little bit of the lay of the land of repo prompt. Uh, over here, we have our workspaces. I've got a bunch of them. A workspace basically gives you all of the content files, everything you want to include in a particular session. So for me, uh, I have our platform infra documentation here. That's the one uh, that we're really working with. That's where Claude code has access. But then I have all of these other directories that I've added to the workspace. These are different apps that I'm running on that Hetzner VPS that we're looking at today. It's not necessarily the core things that uh, Claude needs to edit, but it is good context for Claude to know, hey, these are the apps that are running, right? Now, if I was to try to include all of that in my prompt to Claude code, I would totally wipe out the context window. 
Um, rule of thumb for me is that any particular prompt that you're going to send to Claw, the context, or, or for any model right now, um, the context window uh, or the number of tokens that you're going to send in that prompt, you really want it to be around ideally 30,000 tokens max, but, but up to 60,000 is typically fine. I still get pretty good results there. Above that, you really start to see a degradation in the performance of these models. Now, that may change here in the next six months. There's exciting stuff happening with the context window. Uh, but for right now, that's really kind of the maximum. Uh, so you can see here, uh, the model is doing a bunch of things. It's reading files, it's managing selections. Uh, and you can see it actually checked boxes here for the specific files that it wants uh, to use. Uh, you can see here it found some of our in uh imports. And then great, the context builder has a question. So this pops up for me. Uh, it selected scripts, MCP servers, da, 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 da. Do you want any additional files? So if I thought that there was a change needed um, outside of the files that it's selected in our workspace, I could do that now. Um, but I'm gonna say, no, this, uh, this looks good. Submit. And this is continuing to run. Now up here is where I have the instructions. This was created by the agent as it's working here. Uh, in addition to the instructions, repo prompt has several things that it's going to include. Uh, if I come down here to the bottom, let's see if I can move this the other way. We have a file tree, which gives it all of the things in our workspace. So not just the repository that we're in, but the entire um, file tree. We have code maps, which is giving it the specific languages and just little snapshots of the codes that's being used. We have uh, Git diffs, so we can have our history from GitHub, and then individual prompts. My go-to prompt right now is the MCP agent. Uh, that's how we're using this repo prompt is an MCP server connected to Claude code locally on my computer. So these are all local files. Uh, there are some other built-in prompts. I'm not gonna go through these in detail, but uh, these are all worthwhile uh, prompts to check out. And then right over here at the far right, we have this ability to um, copy the entire prompt. So I'm gonna hop over to cursor. Again, this is just the platform infra. This is the repository I'm working on. Let's just see what we got here. So you can see repo prompt went ahead. It formatted the prompt into kind of an XML style format, which is great for our agents uh, to understand what's going on. Uh, you can see the first bit here is just for the MCP server and it's got the task name. It's going to analyze the platform infra and plan a comprehensive update tracker. It's already made a decision um, for like an SQLite um, database. And then it's got some information about the architecture of our repository. Selected context. This is great. We're now not needing to send over the whole repository, but the model itself has identified the individual files uh, that are most helpful. It provides some information on the relationship between these files. Again, this is real information that it pulled from our repository. And then ambiguities. Anything that's like uh, this uh, is something that it's not totally sure about yet. When it has things like this at a certain level, that's where it'll ask me questions. Uh, and then you can see our file tree. And then a bunch of context, right? Again, we're not providing the full files but we are providing a sense for what's in those files. You can see classes, imports. Uh, this is quite a bit more advanced, right? Than the simple couple of sentences that I wrote there. Um, it already has figured out that we are using the resend API and that that's available. So if it needs to send notification, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's found our logging for backups. Let's just see if there's anything else uh, worth pointing out here. Again, the resend. Uh, this is pretty great. Resend API key. Uh, all of the information that Claude Code needs is available in a one password vault that Claude Code has access to. Uh, so none of the credentials are stored in the code base. They're all just part of that one pass, uh, one password vault. Um, so this is quite a bit more, right? This is a much more detailed prompt with very, very specific context that it's sending to the model. Let's hop back over to um, this and see what's going on. So you can see here the model's still working here. Let's hop over to repo prompt. Let's see. 
This is looking pretty good. Now, once it has this whole plan, which again, I could end up until recently, until these new commands for the agent harnesses, up until then, I would be writing these instructions out by hand. And you can totally still do that, right? You can select the individual files. I love this view. It actually shows us uh, the token size for the individual files. But you can select those, give it your prompt, and then you could take that and put it right into your um, CLI tool. Uh, but what this has done is it's actually taken that information, it created it, and then now they're having a conversation uh, about the plan. So as Claude Code read the instructions and looked at the ambiguities, it had a few questions. And so um, now it came back and it said, hey, yeah, let's uh, take a look at these things. And then I have GPT uh, 5.2 high in this case uh, coming through and it's providing the full plan. So here are even more specific instructions. Now these requested by Claude code itself. Quite a bit of stuff here. It's still running. This video is already pretty long. I may not uh, let it go all the way, uh, but essentially Claude code and GPT-5, there we go, are having a conversation. They're determining exactly what steps are required. And then here you can see now, excellent, all the details we need to implement. Let me create a do list and start implementing. Now Claude code will go through and execute on this plan. Um, if it has additional questions, it can go back and talk with the other model. They can uh, clear up any ambiguities and make sure that that's working um, well. And we can also do the same thing. So this is what I love about repo prompt is that we have the ability to really dial in our context uh, and then have a conversation about it. You can do all of that from within repo prompt. You wouldn't need to go out to the uh, agent harness if you didn't want to. Repo prompt can edit the files, stage them and apply them itself. Um, but I really like this combination of working with either Claude code or codex uh, to develop the plan and then execute on it. If you have any questions, let me know. I love Repo Prompt. I'm really happy with this app. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's my go-to on any time I'm doing anything with code. Thank you so much for your time.